Here we have a majestic lift off of LBM 3M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. The Indian space domain is all fired up. The idea is to reach greater heights. India has the skills, technology, and manpower. ISRO is known to pull off missions at a fraction of the cost that the global space powers do. Still, spacefaring is a costly and risky affair. The Modi government has now eased its policy, which will allow 100% foreign direct investment in the space sector. The idea is to draw money bags to invest in Indian space companies. So from now on, three domains will have distinct FDI limits under the automatic route. One category covers components, systems and subsystems for satellites, along with ground and user segments. This category will have up to 100% FDI without having to go through the government route. The second category covers satellite manufacturing and operation, plus satellite data products and ground and user segments. And this will allow up to 74% FDI automatically. Beyond that, we'll need government clearance. The third category covers key strategic components such as launch vehicles and allied systems, making space ports for launching and receiving spacecraft. Here, up to 49% FDI will be allowed under the automatic route. The amended thresholds mark a significant shift from the existing practice, which allow FDI only in making and operating satellites, and that too, subject to government clearance. The government believes these moves will draw more FDI and create more jobs as well. The space policy unveiled by the government last year was a big bang reform. One big takeaway was opening up the sector to private players by removing most curbs. It allowed them to build rockets, launch, own and operate satellites, etc. All these activities were earlier exclusively limited to government entities. The policy also defined the roles that key institutions will play. ISRO was tasked on focusing on R&D of advanced technology. New Space India Limited, or NSIL, was set up in 2019 as the commercial arm of ISRO. And in 2020, the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center, or InSpace, was set up to develop a space ecosystem with special focus on the private sector. The government believes the new changes made now in space FDI will help the sector absorb new technologies, integrate Indian companies into global value chains, and also give a boost to make in India. With the Chandrayaan-3 mission last year, India became the fourth country to land on the moon. Aditya L1, India's first mission to study the sun, which was launched last year, reached its destination last month. The future space missions too are ambitious. India plans to have its own space station by 2035. So far, the United States, Russia and China have launched and operated space stations on their own. Besides, the International Space Station is managed by a group of countries. India also aims at putting an astronaut on the moon by 2040.